Good day, ladies and gentlemen and colleagues. Yeah, thank you for joining up with this session. Remember, we have started with uh, very long ago with the um, September Paper 2 exam of 2020, and we did the memo discussion on that. And then after that, we started with Paper 1 and did everything with that Paper 1. All the, all the links were sent to you. And then uh, we started with Paper 2. This is the last session of Paper 2 the content of Paper 2. Um, I'm going to do helixes today. Now, if you can fall away with the uh, helixes, uh, let me just quickly show you here. Um, it's actually grade 11 and grade 12 work. So therefore, the content of that is basically focused on grade, grade 11 and 12. Um, what you see in this regard is basically general information I'd like to, to give to you. Now, um, I used to say if you if you explain what a helix is is when you take a paintbrush and you start painting from bottom to top and as the as a drum say for instance is rotating or a cylinder is rotating and the speed of which the paintbrush will go upwards and the speed to which the the, the paint or the cylinder is rotating that speed is constant and the whole time then you can get a helix. In other words, it will be spiraling upwards as you move upwards with the paintbrush and the speed of the rotation of the cylinder is the same. Of, co of course, you have to start somewhere and stop somewhere. So one rotation will be called the pitch. All right, and um, in Afrikaans terms, it will be called the steek afstand or the afstand wat met opwaarts beweeg. So that's the pitch we're talking about. That is, for instance, one rotation from bottom to top in one rotation of the, of, the, of the cylinder itself. Then, of course, you will have to have the diameter. In this case, it's diameter of 50. Then you will have a start position, which is point S in this case. And then from there on, um, whether it's left-handed or right-handed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where most of the learners struggle with in understanding when is it a left hand or when is it a right hand. Now, it, as the word says, right hand or left hand, you must take your right hand, for instance, if it's a right hand rotation, and use a pencil as, a, as a, an explanation for it. Open up your hand um, so that you can see the palm of your hand, and then from there on, put the pencil inside your palm. Your thumb will be pointing out the direction in which it will go upwards, in other words, in that case. And then as you close your fingers, first of all, your little finger, then your ring finger, then your middle finger, then your your wisdom finger, your wise, uh, that from that point onwards, it means that it will go from the back to the left, closing the pencil to the right. In other words, it will be from there on, the right top will be dark. So in other words, if you should hold a pencil in that case, your thumb, the position of the thumb will point out to you upwards, in other words, where it goes to, and then the nails of your, your, um, your, your fingers will point out to you the direction in other words it will start on the on the little finger and then from there on it will go upwards up to where it ends all right so the right top should be dark for a right hand rotation all right now i can i believe you will also be able to see all right for a left hand rotation the left top should be dark and for a left hand rotation your fingers closed down the pencil or and your thumb will be moving upwards and then your nails will be pointing out to you where is the area that will be dark, will be drawn dark, in, in other words. All right, so that is a good indication. Then, of course, also you, the examiner can give it to your horizontal. Now, if it's a left hand, still you're going to use your left hand. The thumb is still going to use the upward direction, and your nails is still going to show to you where exactly is the darker ends and where is the hidden detail part of it. All right, the right hand, exactly the same. Then from there on, it will go towards the right. So the upward position is still upwards where the thumb is. And then if you close your fingers around the pencil or make a fist, then the nails, your nails will be basically pointing out to you the area that needs to be dark. All right, so this can be an indication to you. Now, please, just a, just a good advice is when you do this, for instance, if it does happen that you get um, into a position where you've done basically everything and you realize, goodness, that the direction is wrong, Please don't rub out everything because on the end you're going to lose one or maybe two marks for direction but at least the rest of the, 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 the construction will still be there. So make sure that if you've got, got enough time of which I doubt because always it's a, always a rush in, 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 um, in engineering graphics and design to end up the, the exam paper in time. But if yes, if you, if you say for instance have got or realize that um, you've got the direction wrong, keep it there, 
go on with the rest of the exam paper and if there's enough time, at least 15 minutes or so, then you can come back, rub out and, and redo. Otherwise, go for the two marks penalization and at least get your marks for the, for the rest of the construction. What we have over here, this is now if there's two rotations, in other words, remember the pitch is for one rotation, it's 50 millimeters. So if I have two, two, two rotations, it means it's gonna be 50 plus another 50 millimeters upwards. That brings you up to a second rotation. All right, I will speak to you about the, the quickest way in doing a second rotation. If we take a look at this, what the examiner give you, he's gonna ask you to, um, to redraw. In other words, he's gonna ask you to, in a, to a great extent, um, copy the, the given. All right, so that's basically what's given to you. You have to copy and again, out of, out of let's say for instance, 20 marks, this will be 1% or 2%, so you're gonna get four marks or something like that in totals. It's not gonna be worth it and say, all right, I've copied it and I will pass now. Then from there on, it's a circle, so we know how to divide the circle into 12 parts by now. Um, this is also a process where you have to divide the pitch into 12 equal parts. Now that construction has been done in grade 10, so you believe, I believe you will be able to, to do that. Um, that is with parallel lines and using your set squares and your rulers and your compass in, in doing so. So now you've got your 12 increments on the bottom and then for the first six, you will be able to say, right, zero goes to zero. In other words, if I start with zero and I start with zero over there, this is the first increment. So therefore the first increment will be there. That's the first increment. So if I join those two with each other, obviously I'm gonna get the first point. There's my second increment on my, on my vertical scale. This is my second increment that I will have on my um, circle. And if I join those two with each other, there will be the second point, the third point, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth point. Now this is always of good advice if you start right on the side there, then obviously six will be right on that point and 12 will be up there. Now, if you end up with 12 somewhere here, some distance away from the pitch, it means something went wrong. Then either you don't have got 12 points over here, either you divide this area into not into 12 parts, the pitch has been drawn longer than what it is and you've got this last point, not to the last point, but somewhere in between. So this is a good tip for you if you do this one, Get to six at that point and 12 at the end. Of course, if you start in the middle, then six should be in the middle and then 12 or the last point will be in the middle again. All right, so that, that is what you, nine will be then on this side and, and oh, sorry, nine will be on that side and three will be on this side if it starts in the middle. All right, so that is, that is what I'd like to say to you. Now, of course, this is now one rotation. This one points out a right-hand rotation. So therefore, to the right, it will be dark. Once I've got all my 12 points, I can draw it in. Remember, it goes to the right, so the right top should be dark, or the nails where your nails is of your fingers, that will be indicating to you the darker end, so therefore that's what you will see over there. So this is the rotation of a helix. Straightforward, nothing strange to that. If it has got a second rotation, remember now you have already showed the examiner the principle of how to divide an area into 12 parts. You already have got it perfectly correct in that area over there. You've already got the 12 parts in your circle, you know what the pitch is, the total distance from bottom to top. So now take your bisector. You can even use your compass if you don't have got a bisector, but you have to have a bisector. Take your bisector and then take that same distance, that same length, and only plot it from the bottom upwards until you reach that point and make a dot over there. And take the second one and take make a dot and make, take the third and the fourth and the fifth. And then from there on you basically redraw the bottom part and then with your bisector set on the pitch, the total height in other words, you do the same with the, with, the, with the increments that's basically on the bottom over here. So there we go with the upper part and without wasting time, in one go, you can go very quickly and go find all those lines over there and you can complete this part, which is the second rotation. So please don't waste time in doing all these division of lines for a second time and even for a third time or whatever the case might be. It's already done. You got your marks for that. You're not going to get marks to do it a second time in that case. All right, now we're working with the auger. All right, the auger is over here. It points out to you the auger um, has got some detail. Eight millimeters is the pitch. The diameter is 50 and then the inner diameter is 10 millimeters. So yeah, off we go. So we, we're going to finish off this. Um, there we go. So this is the copying part of it. Of course, we have to divide the circle into 12 parts. Once we're done with that, we have to divide this, the, 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 the vertical height, the pitch, in other words, of 80 millimeters, also in 12 parts. And like I said, zero goes to zero, 
one goes to one, two goes to two, three goes to three, and there we go with that part, all those, also the upper parts, there we have that por portion. And then once we're done with it, we can draw the auger. All right, now just remember this, this auger has got an a, a inner part, all right? So the same as with the outer part, the inner part we will also divide into 12 parts, or we already have got the 12 ends over here on the outer part, you don't have to renumber it again. All right, so there we go with the inner circle, zero goes to zero we set, so we will start there. There is one, so if you draw a horizontal line up there and we, we meet one over there on that point, that's going to be the first point. That's going to be the second point, the third point, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and so it carries on again. If you do the inner part, six and six will be in line with each other, right? So therefore it will be on the side. Three and nine will be in the middle of it, and then 12 will be at the end there on the top, right? So make sure that you've got your symmetry correct and your starting position and so on. And also if it starts in the middle over here, then it would have been one over there, then three should be there, six should be in the middle, nine should be on the side, and 12 should be on the top there. Right, there we go with the upper part. Now we can draw the inner core part of the, of the auger. Now we have to establish, according to the direction, it is right hand, so therefore the right top should be dark. So we can draw the top part dark in, and then from there on we can complete this part. This one is left-handed, it points out to you over there, left-handed. So in that case, the left top should be dark. So there's a left top part, and that should be dark. In other words, if we use the, 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 the first method at, uh, and the thumb method of what we have. All right, so there we go. In other words, that's the end result. Please don't wrap out your construction lines. It says, no hidden detail required, show all construction. So therefore, keep the construction lines, because otherwise the examiner is not going to be able to give you marks for dividing and subdivision and all those type of things and so on. So please keep, keep that on, 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 on intact there. Okay, if you go to shoots, a uh, shoot itself is basically when we have something like a first floor, second floor, or the ground level and first floor, and then we have a some sort of slider that slides you down, or a parcel or something like that, to the bottom floor. All right, so that's basically, so you have to have, make, to, make use of an auger, but if, if it's only an auger, then something will slip off from the side. So therefore you have to have some sort of hinge or a reach or something like that on the end to prevent you to falling over. So therefore, or the parcel, if the parcel is sliding downwards to keep it in, plaque, in place and, and, and in, intact. Okay, circle divided into 12 parts. I have to take my vertical area and I have to divide that into 12 parts. And then from there on the bottom part, zero to zero, one to one, two to two. And so we carry on, make sure about the starting position, that's the start position over there on the right hand bottom side. Make sure about the direction, in this case left handed, so the left top should be dark. So if we got onto this point, we also have got a core part, like we said, you can number it again or you can use the bigger numbers, saving time. And then from there on, determine the, the inner core, which is that part over there. Once you have got it over those two, you have to determine which will be dark and which not, so therefore left Hand will be left top dark, so I will have that part as a dark part. In this case, I also have got a core and a side. Now, just quickly have a look on this, this position I'm pointing out to you here. This is the height of it. The examiner will give you the height. Don't worry about that. So that's the height of it. Again, you don't have to readjust, redo this part 10 millimeters or 12 millimeters higher if that is 12 millimeters in height. Again, you use your bisector. You've got all the points already been determined in the process on the, on the outer diameter. So just take your bisector and plot all those areas upwards. And then of course you've got most now the, the upper part of it. So there we go with the upper part. The core part will be the inner part and that's what we have in this case. So therefore this is the shoot. So if I put a parcel on top there, it will slide downwards and that is the, the groove or the shoot it will run into and there's parts that will be hidden behind and there's parts that will be visible, like in that case. So therefore, please make sure again that you don't wrap out your construction lines, otherwise you're not gonna get your marks. And on the end, you have to work through your points. Your curve quality is very important over here. Your curve quality has have to go through those intersection points at all times. You've determined those intersection points. You can't go without those intersection points. All right, so this is with the shoot. Then from there on a coil spring, if you take a look at the coil spring, this is again, shows you all the diameters of everything. It even points out to you the diameter of this coil spring is a diameter of 10 millimeters, right? The pitch is eight, 80 millimeters. The, the, the diameter 
of course, of this part over here is a diameter of 50 millimeters, and so we can carry on. All right, so that is what the examiner is pointing out to you. So that you've copied now. Once you've copied this, you can divide your circle into 12 parts. But I want to emphasize something over here. Don't redraw the outer circle and the inner circle as two, two um, helixes going upwards. Rather take the center of this and use and work only with the center. You'll see this, the circle division is also going only to the center of this coil spring. It doesn't go to the sides. We're not going to bother with the sides. We're going to focus on the center point over here. All right, so once we've got the center point, we have to divide this into 12 parts, the horizontal, the vertical part into 12 parts. That goes one to one, two to two, three to three, and so on. Now, just take care. It's a right-handed, so therefore the direction has changed. So this upper part, the right-hand part, will be dark, in other words. So if you go up there, use the center line, show the center line, and from the center line as a curve, you have to draw small little circles. Remember, this is a coil spring, so in other words, it's a round shaped spring that will be going upwards all the way up to the top so in fact we're going to have little circles in there and again struggling with a compass a large compass or so will take a lot of time in drawing small circles with a large compass or rather give you get yourself a smaller compass proper compass and also besides that even a circle stencil will be perfect in this because you're going to work much faster through those 10 millimeter diameters you have to draw 12 of them and then once you've got the outer parts, you can have a tangent line or a tangent curve towards that part. Make sure it's right-handed, so right-hand top should be dark. And then from there on, um, you have to show this by this position over here. Now I've enlarged that position over there. That's what you have to draw afterwards. Please don't rub out again. And then this is the, the curve, how is it turning? And then from there on, this endpoints over here will turn actually towards the next circle center point and that gives you the idea or the impression that this part is in front of and that part is behind of course this curve will curve downwards to the center of the bottom one so it's also curving out towards this position but this is the way that you will do that so that was the next circle center position and that's where you're going to um, point out the front part and the back part all right square thread if you take a look at square thread this is the the square thread, in other words, there's a few things I want to point out to you. The diameter has only been given to you as the inner and the outer diameter. There's no pitch being given. Nowhere that it says what the pitch is. All right, so we're going to redraw this part. Now we just have to take care before we carry on. The pitch will be determined by means of the, the groove part of this square thread, in other words. If this groove part is, let's say for instance, just take for example, it's not in this case, 25 millimeters. It means that you will have a hollow area of 25 by 25 by 25, but you will also have a solid area like of 25 by 25 by 25. All right, so that is the, 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 the in and out or the importance of, of a square thread. So the examiner is not going to give you all the information. You have to figure it out now. All right, so the first one point I want to note is the gap of the square thread is always the same as the solid portion of the square thread. All right, so if this is the gap part over there, that's going to be the solid. So that's the first position of how I will be determine the pitch of this part. So if this is, let's say, for instance, the calculation will give me 50 millimeters, or that part is the gap of the solid part. In other words, if that is 50 millimeters and this is 10 millimeters, I'm going to subtract 50, 10 from 50, in other words, that gives me 40 millimeters. So that is the 20 and that's the 20. So the groove, in other words, will be 20. So if this groove is 20, it means that the upper solid part or the upper hollow part or the groove is 20 by 20 by 20. And that part is also 20 by 20 by 20. So by calculation, I can work out the pitch now of this part. And of course, the hollow part and the, and the solid part, that will give me one rotation. And that's basically then 40 millimeters for the total height of the pitch which is 20, 20, 20 for the groove, 20 for the solid part. All right, so once we're done there, divide the circle into 12 parts. 0 to 0, 1 to 1, 2 to 2, get your vertical in, uh, um, division, and then from there on you work on what it is up to so far. And then you can draw this part in. Remember, this is a left-hand square thread, so therefore to the left, will be left top should be dark. That's the left top part of it. All right. 
It has got a core part inside. The hollow part is 40 of 20 by 20 by 20, and the solid part for the 20 by 20 by 20, which gives you 40 in total. So therefore, we have to start working on the rest of this part. Now, the, the inner parts also now be divided into 12 parts. That's where we go with that part. Then we do the inner part, which is exactly the same as the auger up to so far. So there we go with the upper part. And then this is 20 by 20. So I can say, if I go 20 upwards, again, don't draw this as a second option on this side over here. You already have done that. And you know this, this area is basically then 20. In that area, it will be 20. So therefore, it's going to be 20 by 20. So take all your strategic points and measure the 20 millimeters upwards to get the upper part. So there we go with the upper part. Once we're there, we can also go from there and complete the back part of it. So therefore, that's the back part. Not everything will be visible. This is the pitch. So the pitch will give me the solid part at this second point. And of course, it goes to the upper part as well at the back part. The inner part, that is what you will see in that case. We're going to end it off on there. And then that will go downwards to find the inner part. That will go upwards to find the inner part. And then, from, of course, we have to do the core parts of it. Now, remember, let's quickly have a look. This is one rotation from there down to the top there. And then we have to end it off on that point. All right, so therefore, we have to end up the last part. All right, so that's basically what it points out to you, why it goes higher than the pitch, because we have to end off the circle or the screw thread at that specific point. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this is of course your, your higher order question. This is, this is um, work, although it's been done in grade 11, shoots wasn't done in 11. It's only um, round springs, helix, augers, and uh, the square thread that comes from grade 11. But besides the fact that you have to have the insight to see how will it look inside. I always used to say, take a bicycle, take a car or something like that and let the car drive down there. I will see the car there. It will disappear at that point behind the pillar, will be visible again and then disappear behind this point over here. So that gives me the impression of what is standing in front of and what is standing behind. Again, you've got your hidden detail, your construction lines, all those type of things. It doesn't ask any hidden detail in this case. So you simply just keep it as what it is and don't rub out your construction lines. And that gives us basically the three options of the auger, the chute, the round spring, and also the square thread. That is the questions that you can expect in that regard. If I can go towards this point over here, let's start with, with the auger. Let me just quickly see this exercise over here. This was the exam paper. Again, it was shared, so you can imagine for yourself how quick you have to work with all those constructions and everything um, to make sure that you will be able to do this part as well as the second option, or the second question. So therefore, again, you have to have the knowledge and know the knowledge and basically come to exam room with the knowledge. You can't basically sort things out in the exam room. Now, this one is horizontal. And remember I told you, it points out to a right hand so therefore, if we start over there with the right hand, my nails I used to say that will give me or the, or the right top. Now in this case, where is top and where is bottom because it's going into this direction or in that direction. All right, so in that case, I have to start at this position. Right hand is going into that direction to the right, in other words. So therefore, that is the, on the bottom. This is not to say this is a, a top view or something like that. This, this can be, in this case, it points out to you a left view. Right, seen from the left, taken back and placed over here in third angle geographic projection, paper two. Upwards is going, going into this direction to the right as you look at it. So therefore, this part over here will be the dark part. That's where my nails will be if I take my right hand and curl it around or make a fist around this, this core part over here. Pitch is 60. So again, the examiner is giving you 90 millimeters over here. So in other words, one rotation won't start there and end up at that point. One rotation will stop more or less there. It's asking for one and a half rotation in this distance. So the pitch is 60, so I have to measure 60, make one rotation in 60, and then I still have to do the rest of it, the ex extra part of it. All right, so again, read very carefully what the examiner is pointing out to you. That's the starting position, so that's point PQ, and we can start off on point R. So the examiner is helping us by orientation to say that is point R. I have to do the rest of this in this position. All right. So again, like I said to you, make sure, make absolutely 100% sure about 
what you have to put and where you have to put all the, all the, all the parts in. Now this is your answer. It's horizontal. It's standing from left to right. This is my left view. This is point R. And then over here, it points out to you the right top is dark. So there's the right top and there's the right top over there. 60 millimeter measured from there to there. And then from there on, 90 is up to there. So therefore another half, it gives you one and a half rotation. And that is what points out to you. If you start over here, this is simple as what it was standing up straight. It's basically then one, two, or zero to one, two, two, three, three to four. I've got zero there. One, two, three, four, up to 12 points. That is one towards one. That is two towards two, three towards three, four, four, five, and five. And so we carry on to make one rotation and the other half. You, in fact, don't need to do the division over here. You could have only have done it up to 60 millimeters. So the 12 point could have gone to, this, to the 12 point over there. And then you got all back. In this case, you have got 12 points plus another six points extra onto this part to complete this part over here. You can also do it that way but rather stick to the rules that I've gave you in the beginning. Pitch into 12 parts, the last part should have gone towards that part. That's the, what you're familiar with. Remember the center lines afterwards, and then of course the core part must be shown which will be visible and which will be invisible in the process. All right, the next one I'd like to explain to you is the shoot. Again, the examiner was giving this to you with two questions. So this was again a very, um, tight call into doing all of both of these two in the same sequence of time because you have to start thinking on how the answer will look like and halfway when you're through with this you have to start thinking on the next answer the second answer um, which gives you another thinking process which eats up another five minutes of your time in the process all right so over here this is the information given all right so it's the it's the top view and the incomplete front view showing the starting position, mid position, and also the end positions of the shoot, the center lines, and then also the pitch is 60 millimeter, turns only one rotation, it must be a left hand rotation, so left top should be dark, using the given lines, and no hidden detail, show all constructions. It gives you this part over here, you have to do the answer, and um, remember in this case, it, it's been given the, 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 the center lines, but you must always remember about the center lines that you have to put. Right, left rotation tells you to the left top will be dark. That is one rotation to the top. And then from there on, what you see over here is the core parts and the, the shoot part. Remember, this will be measured upwards with your bisector to s save some time in the process. So don't waste time in doing a second construction of whatever you have to do over there. Then the next one I'd like to point out to you is this round spring. Like we did explain, again it was shared with another question. So in that case, that was, this was asked in 2014. This is the round spring, in other words, the pitch is 100, the outer diameter, the inner diameter, the spring profile is diameter of 16. So if you subtract that with each other and divide by two, you will get up to 16. Direction is right-handed. The total rotations they're asking is instructions, draw scale to one to one, view of one turn, one rotation in those of the coil spring. Show all the necessary constructions. This is also, again, it's standing horizontal. S is over there, so therefore S is over here. It's pointing out to you the given right view of a coil spring. So the front view, if this is the right view, the front view will be placed over here. So the front view will be placed over here, and the right, seen from the right, will be placed on the right-hand side over here. Okay, so redraw will give you given and center lines. That was three marks out of 21. That is, that is just basically a percent if you see it that way. All right, so that was given, and then you have to do the construction, the rest of the construction over here. If we should take a look at the answer. Now, um, so I just want to rotate this one. There we go. So this is the answer being given to you. Again, the examiner is also pointing out to you, rather work on the center. Work out the center, show the center point of it by means of a center line, because you get, get marks for that. Draw your circles around each of those points. Once you're done with it, then you can take your tangent line and you can draw it in. Can you see this part, this portion over here where this has been pointed towards the next circle center point that gives you the impression of in front of and behind. And this curve is curving outwards to the next center point of the next circle. Right, so that's the direction. And then of course, this part has been chopped off. So therefore, you do the hatching 
in that regard. All right, so that is the marks. That is straightforward. You got your 12 points. You work with the center point and you figure it out. All right, now the last question I want to point out to you that was for a square um, thread. Now, in this case, you can imagine for yourself how much work there goes in with a square thread because you've got lots of, you've got one on the bottom, one on the top, one on the bottom, one on the top. You've got four helixes that you have to bring in consideration. This one, if it makes one rotation, it's fine, but if it makes another rotation, it's one and a half rotations that it makes. Right, so therefore, in that case, you're going to have an extension as well that you have to figure out. Can you see the examiner never gave you the pitch height from top to bottom? It's pointing at you that is 24 by 24 by 24, and you should know the rule about square threads that the hollow area and the solid area is basically the same so that's going to be 24 by 24 so the pitch in this case will be 48 in millimeters in total and then you still have to do another rotation for the other half of it all right so yes there's a lot of thinking processes in here you have to work very quick and very fast and effective should you wish to finish this one in time having two questions in one question all right the answer of this one i'm going to quickly going to go through this part over here there we go it starts on the bottom this will make one rotation, and that's the half of rotation. But we've got some extra luggage with us, so therefore we have to, in this case, still have to end it off on the bottom and end it off on the top. Now, it doesn't really show this part over here. I should say that that is a weak point on the, on the, on the memo part of it, but you still have to show the end point, which is that part over here being drawn in on this point over here. All right, so there we go with the marks. You can see there's a lot of work. Still, you have to do the other, other question as well. So this is shared question. And like I say, most of the times, helixes will be a shared question. So you have to figure out to yourself on how quick and how fast you can work. And the only um, solution I have got for you guys in terms of this is by practice. Practice regularly. Get yourself some old exam papers. Remember, you just need a clean page and a photocopy of that, so therefore you can have it on your cell phone and you can work from your cell phone. You don't have to have a A3 page for practice at home. You can take ruled papers, you can take any clean piece of paper and you can do the constructions on that part, making sure that you've got all the information, everything correct in there, so that work to work things out in terms of that. So yes, that's the long and short. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining. I really appreciate your um, attendance. I really hope that this sessions that I have had with you guys will help you a lot in preparation for the end exam. Um, these are the questions. These are the, the options that the examiner used to come up with. So please stick to the rules. Make sure that you understand. And I really wish you a very well and a, and a, and a very good exam paper, paper one and paper two, so that you can have good marks for that. And I hope and trust that this helped you a lot. Thank you very much for, for joining and good luck. God bless.